night's workshop um, is um, with the lovely Illy from so Illy, Illy Boo Designs, Illy, isn't it? Illy Boo Designs, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Tombo ends ready to hand over so do a little bit of an introduction about yourself how you got into using Tombo pens and lettering and then obviously what we're doing for the workshop this evening amazing okay oh. hello everyone thank you so much for um sorry oh, how was on? okay thank you can you hear me you can still hear me yeah yes. you can hear you. okay perfect um so I'm Eliana from Eliboo Designs. I'm a modern calligrapher and lettering artist. Um, I've been doing this for probably, I can't even count anymore, maybe about five or more years. Um, but I did start my business up professionally um, in about, I think it was around 2019. Um, so I haven't been doing it for an awfully long time, but I do have a, an extensive creative background. So a lot of that has transitioned over um, love graphic design, love typography, so hence why I kind of got into lettering. Um, I obviously started, when I first started, it was a hobby, and I started using a dip pen and ink, and that was, it's more kind of like traditional style of calligraphy, quite difficult, but um, I learnt it that way, and then slowly I started seeing more and more of a trend happening with brush pen lettering and I remember buying a brush pen. Actually, I bought a Tombow ABT, one of these exact pens, um, many, many, many years ago when I was in art school. And I didn't quite know what to do with it. So I just chucked it in my toolbox and forgot about it and it dried up. And it's quite funny how I'm actually using them constantly today. Um, obviously, have learned how to use them. Um, so yeah, so I started out with um, very small, I used the very, very small brush uh, pens from uh, Tombow, so the Fidonoskes and Pentels. So I started with those first because they're great for beginners. And then I moved over to the slightly fatter, chunky nibs. Again, it was a lot of experimentation that I had to do around calligraphy, around brush lettering, because um, although they uh, are based around the same kind of principles and techniques, you still have to change the way you hold them, the angling, um, there's a lot of differences. So um, slowly but surely, I worked my way through it. It wasn't very good, I won't lie, but uh, I then got better and it ended up becoming one of my favorite uh, tools to use for calligraphy because I love the freeness and the freedom you have in using uh, brush pens. So that's a little bit about me. Um, now what we're going to do today, this is a nice kind of mini uh, workshop. I've got you here today just to show you basically it's technique, it's how to use the pens, what these pens are, what do they do. I like using a combo of the ABT Tombow brush pens and also the Pro. Um, and I'll tell you why, these are alcohol based, they don't run, whereas the ABTs, uh, they are water-based pens. So you, it means that you can mix them with water, you can create really beautiful watercolor effects, but on those occasions when you don't want to have any of your colors smear or bleed into each other, I tend to use these pens and I, I also use them a lot for shadowing. So things like on the Christmas trees, if you can very, uh, it's very faint, but there's a lovely little kind of grey shadow effect that I use. So I, I kind of, you know, change, interchange uh, with the, the differences with the, these different pens. So what I'm going to show you tonight is how to create um, this design, basically. So it's nice and simple, something just quite festive and fun. And we'll be using both uh, sides of this pen. Now, this is called an ABT Jewel tip brush pen. Um, reason being, obviously, dual tip, it's got two ends. So this end is the brush pen tip, and as you can see, it looks like a paintbrush, very pointy tip, and then it's got a really long um, side to it. Now this is where, and I'm going to show you some techniques, where to get the thick and thin, and that's the technique that you want to try and master in calligraphy. So if you're new to it and you're unsure, just sit back and maybe have a look at what I'm doing. But what we're gonna do, or if you have your brush pens, get them out. It doesn't even matter which ones you have. If, if you've got slightly smaller ones, that's totally fine. As I said, principles the same. And I'm gonna show you 
how to hold your brush pen and how to place pressure on your brush pen. So what we'll be doing is once I've shown you a few warm up strokes, we'll get into the lettering and then I will show you how I incorporate some lovely little illustrations. And again, this is just fun and free flowing. So if you have your own ideas, by all means, use, you know, use what you have um, and bring in what you want. And that's totally fine. Um, just again, the other tip of the pen, it's a mono line tip. So this means that it only does one, um, one variation of stroke. It doesn't do several variations of, um, you don't have a variation of stroke, should I say, with the tip, you just get one single line. So again, that's what I use to do the um, illustrations of the Christmas trees on this one. So it's quite nice because you can play around with the different sorts of thicknesses of your line with your brush pen. So to start off with, um, hopefully grab some plain paper. I tend to use um, thicker card, Bristol pads, uh, rodeo pads, or really good quality smooth uh, photocopy paper. You do want to ensure that the paper you are using with your brush pens um, is, is relatively smooth because it can affect and fluff up the tips of the pen. So just be aware of that. So Bristol board is one of my favorites to use. So I'm gonna show you a couple of warm ups and how I generally the kind of like the rules, the general rules around holding a brush pen. Now you don't have to stick to this religiously, but in order to get that variation, you need to be able to angle your pen. So I would say around a 45 degree angle when you're, when you're holding and using your pen to write with. So as I said, when you go on certain strokes in calligraphy, we've got two. Um, one is the downstroke, which is nice and thick, which is that line that I've just done there. And the other is a thin upstroke, like so. So these are the two strokes we use a lot with calligraphy. And what you're doing is you're trying to master this. It's all about pressure. So thinking when you do a downstroke, you need to place a little bit more pressure on the tip. Don't be too worried about putting more pressure onto it. Again, this is something you need to just gauge as you keep practicing and it becomes easier the more you practice. And what we're doing here is basically trying to just go between, and don't worry if it's wobbly, go between the two different pressures. So you want almost like a lightness when you go on the upstroke, like the tip of the pen is kissing the paper. So very, very light. Now that upstroke is always going to be a bit wobbly. Don't worry too much about that. Again, as I said, it just takes a bit of practice. So this is a really good exercise to do where you just want to try getting that even distribution with your line. And like I said, the wobbles will disappear the more you practice. So that's the idea. Now then you want to take those two lines and bring them into more of a shape. So these tend to be some of the other shapes we do, the upturns and the downturns. So again, you're going between these sorts of shapes and you're bringing in those two thicknesses with the line that you're trying to create. So as you can see, I'm just pulling in those two different lines. Now I am going a little bit quick, quickly. I do, as a calligrapher, I am quite quick and quite fast at, um, at writing now because I've become so used to it and I've developed my own style and technique, but that's just something that will come over time. Like we've all started from somewhere. So don't worry about it, take it slowly. Um, now I'm going to take that those two lines and pull them into an oval. This is a, a shape that we use constantly in calligraphy and it's a really good one to try and master. So again, don't worry if it's not a closed shape. What I want you to do is think about 
the thickness. So on the downstroke, always thick. On the upstroke, you pull up, that's always thinner. So you have to just keep uh, applying that pressure and think about it as you're going along with your practice. So just for warm up, because it's always a good thing to do, I tend to pull all these little strokes back into my practice. So we're doing, actually I'm going the wrong way. We're doing our upstroke here and then our downstroke like so. So upstroke here and downstroke. And then we're going down and then we're coming up. I mean, there's lots of different variations that you can add to your strokes just to get the practice, just to create muscle memory in your hand and feel out the shaping of your stroke. So by all means, play around with it. Sometimes I do things backwards. I do them the other way around, like these ovals. I'll go the other way. So you're starting thinner, you're going round. You're really trying to exercise your hands and your fingers. So don't be too concerned if you don't always get all your shaping the right way round. The best thing to really focus on is that thick to thin. So that's what you're practicing constantly. So I'll just do a couple more so that we can see that before I go into writing out some of the, the letters. So we're gonna be doing this, we're gonna be going up to down and down to up. And then we're gonna do an oval and then we're gonna do a backwards oval. Now if you find the ovals quite difficult, think about the letter C <clears throat> and just try to focus on getting that lovely thick to thin line. And then once you feel a bit more confident with it, pull that line further up. And you can also do that backwards, so that's fine. So go from that way to this way. So I'm always changing the shapes around, flipping them um, between each other. So that's a really good one to do. Okay, so now we're gonna start thinking about shapes of our letters. Um, and how we pull in that shaping, the thick to the thin, and how we pull that into some of our, our letters. Now, obviously, I'm only showing you the words Merry Christmas. Um, I do teach calligraphy, I do lots of workshops, I do a lot of brush pen workshops and dip pen. And so it's something that if you are excited to carry on your practice, by all means, um, I've got workshops and um, kits that are available to buy where I can obviously I show you further how you can develop your skills so it's one thing to um, to do it here but if you want to explore it further by all means do get in touch with me um, and we can look at that so um, let's think about the words first so what I tend to do if I take my mono um, tip I just tend to write the words out so this is what I want to achieve so it's my Merry Christmas and I'll just write it out and then I'm going to actually start thinking about placement at this point so I tend to think about where I want things to go do I want to write my Merry Christmas out in one line do I want it one on top of the other one thing to bear in mind is that sometimes you have these descending loops that come around from your descending letters, so your Y's, your G's, um, your P's, and you have to just be careful that they don't bang into the word that's below it. So if you're trying to stack your, your words on top of each other, you just have to be mindful of where things like the T bars cross and where your descending uh, tails on your letters, where they curl down. So sometimes I will sit and play a little bit and just think about where I want the positioning of things to go. So that's a really good way to first off begin 
your layouts for your letters. Um, and then, as I said, on every downstroke, it goes thick. On every upstroke, it goes thin. So what I'm starting to do, and you've got to notice this, I'm taking these different little shapes that we've just been practicing above, and I'm starting to pull them in to my letter, so M. And as you can see, it's similar to these up terms that we were doing earlier, where you have that thick to thin line coming through. Again, with something like a, uh, an E, you're thinking about the letter C. So you're pulling in that really similar shape that we were doing earlier with the ovals and with the C. So everything up thin, everything going down thicker. Again, I'm going to do, and this is very dependent on your style, on what you're trying to achieve with your calligraphy, but you have various ways of creating your letters. So we can go for more of a typographic look. So I'm doing, again, my downturn is coming into my Y, and then I'm bringing that nice thick downstroke and light upstroke to make up my descending loop on my Mary. Now there are other shapes to these letters. So in calligraphy, we do quite swirly curly R's, which are beautiful. And they look something like this. So that does take practice. They're not the easiest, obviously, to do straight off. If you are struggling, do take your thin mono line tip and draw it out first. OK, and then think about structuring it now. So on the upstroke, Again, thin, as we come down, we want it a little thicker. And then as we do our main stroke of the R, we want that to be thickest. So we've got a little bit of variation going on. That takes a little bit of practice, obviously, because you're having to control this tip. Now, this is a very, this is a, big, a bigger tipped pen. And as I said, if you are struggling a little bit, I would use a Fidonoske, so I can maybe get one of those to show you. So that's the thinner tip pen. So it looks a lot like this, but the principles are exactly the same. Um, it's just that you have a little bit more control over it. So I'm gonna do the Mary one more time. So again, downstroke, thicker, and then we're pulling in that lovely light to thick, up and down straight, okay? So you've got your up, your down, and then I'm pulling in my E. Now I'm gonna do those R's that I was telling you about earlier, and I'm pulling those in and joining them. I don't know if you notice at points, I do stop before I bring in the next letter. And by all means, do that. Don't feel you've got to write everything out in one go. That's not the point. What you're doing is piecing. So, I'm bringing in my Y and then creating a nice swirl on the end of my descending tail for my Y. Okay, so we're going to go on to the, the word Christmas now and then we're going to pull those two together. So I'm just going to flip over to that and I'm going to change the colour of my pen. So we're going to be doing that in a different colour. Now Christmas, as we did before, the C, we start with a light, thin stroke as we go up. And as we come down, that stroke is going to be nice and thick. And then we're going to pull up. Now, again, take that slowly. So I'm doing this piece by piece for each letter before I join them. So C, and then we've got our H. Again, nice thick down stroke. And... Our H. Now you can see how all these little shapes we were doing before, they keep piecing all our alphabet letters. So again, I'm going to go to this R and then my I. And then I'm doing my S, my T. And don't worry if it's not perfect, again, 
you have to warm your hand up and these little upstrokes which look a little fluffy will get cleaner and better and as I said I'm a little bit of a faster calligrapher so going slower for me sometimes I get a bit more wobbly that's all so again with our M as we were doing for Mary down stroke thick up stroke thin down stroke thin and then we're doing that same movement and shaping again for the M and then for the A very similar to an oval so I tend to create the shape like a C shape um, for my A and then I pull in a thick stroke on my A for the tail. And then again, I'm pulling in that S, okay? So I've done that like almost um, letter by letter. Um, and also sometimes doing that, it helps you to kind of gauge where you want your letters to sit as well. So I tend to go for more of a bouncy, I like quite bouncy lettering. Um, so that's sort of my, my thing. So I'm going to think about this now and I'm going to start adding in a bit. Sometimes I don't join everything. So as you can see, I'm doing this a little bit quicker because it's just the way I work. And then I like to pull in on the crossbars of my letters, I like to pull in a bit more of a flourish. So I'm actually creating a little bit more excitement and something a bit more fun. But as you can see already, like going from that to that and just pulling a little bit more bounce into your lettering, it creates a little bit more interest. So that's a really nice way of making it more exciting and a little bit more appealing. Um, and also that's um, another way that you can start to develop your own style, your own unique style. Um, so we're gonna take the two words now and I'm going to start with my merry. So, I'm going to think about where I want. So I'm doing a small, a slightly smaller descending loop on my Y, as I was saying before, because I don't want it to fashion to my Christmas. Now it's okay to have certain letters over that. And to be honest with you, using the colours, the difference in colour um, that I'm, I'm using uh, today that also it quite helps you to see the two words quite clearly so that's always a good thing I think when you're doing black on black sometimes if you have too many overlaps uh, you lose the um, the clarity you lose you lose kind of like the definition in what's going on and can it be read and that's what you always want to try and achieve um, with your calligraphy so now I'm going to think about my Christmas and where So as you can see, I've overlapped that bit, but it's clear, like you can see what's going on and then created a straighter crossbar. So again, play with your crossbars and your letters, play with um, the variation in that style. So that's, tech, that's basically what I've done with this. So I've kind of, again, I've overlapped it, but it's quite clear, like I said, because you've got the two different uh, contrasting colors in this piece. So what we can do is try doing that again. I might swap it around and actually do my Mary in red. So and then I'm going to go to my green and then pull that in. I have a question. Yes, absolutely. Would you suggest for beginners like myself to maybe write out the lettering in pencil first and then write with the pens and erasing the pencil marks after? You can absolutely do that. That's not a problem at all. And what's really good about this is that um, you can rub them out underneath through the ink. I've, I've done that many a time. Sometimes when I'm doing my own layouts, I will do a very light tracing of the lettering. Sometimes I use a light box. 
Um, sometimes I also use tracing paper if I'm practicing and I want to experiment a little bit more with the layout. But by all means, yes, you can do that. Just try not to press. If you're using something like Bristol board, or even if you're going to like a, your final card design, don't press too hard into the paper because um, it can obviously leave a little bit of an indentation and sometimes it doesn't always rub out. But yeah, by all means you can. So I'm gonna pick that up. Okay, and sometimes if you do something and you're not sure, but you want to pick it back up, by all means do, pull it back into that letter. Don't be afraid of the letters. They're not gonna bite. They're not gonna jump out and go in a different direction. You are in control of this. So you let, you know, you let that flow kind of like, you control that flow, should I say, of your letters. We have another question. Yes. Would you recommend a beginner to buy the water-based or the alcohol-based brush pens, or do you really need both? Okay, so with the, I would absolutely recommend the ABT water-based pens, so these ones. The ABT Pros, um, I wouldn't say I use them an awful lot. I only have these colours, and I'll show you what they, they do. Now, for instance, if I was to take another colour, and I'm going to take a grey, from my box and I'm going to show you what happens so if I've got my grey and I want to create some shadowing on my lettering and I start to pull that grey in what happens is because it's water-based it starts to mix in with each other and you start to get traces of the, the green picking up on the grey so this is what's happening right now if I'm going to be putting my shadowing in and I don't like that because obviously what happens is it starts to pick up like it's not horrible but you're whatever color you're using it starts to pull back in so what I tend to do is ABT uh, pros because they're alcohol based they don't basically go anywhere they are smellier pens obviously because they've got alcohol in them and I try not to use them too heavily on things because as you can see if I show you the back of my card you can see that because it's alcohol based, it will seep through. That's why it's quite good to use quite thick card when you're doing any of these sorts of designs. And I'll only do it when I'm using it in this sense and doing the outline against another very strong color. So right now with the alcohol base, it won't, it won't smudge at all. I can go over this as many times as I want to and it stays exactly where I put it. The only thing is that the alcohol base will, um, it sort of uh, bleeds a little bit on the paper. So you don't wanna go too, you don't wanna put too much welly into it when you're doing it. You kind of wanna be quick about it because it will bleed a little bit. And because there's less control on that, I would suggest if you're a beginner, don't use them to do your main lettering. Um, I can also show you what they look like when you do, just to give you an example. I've got some other colours. I can try my red. So we've got, the, they're quite messy as well. I'm not really selling them, am I? Um, no, they are really good, honestly. Like I said, I use them for very specific uh, parts of my lettering. And, and like you saw on the card and on my design, they work really beautifully. So if I, do my lettering with them you can see they're a little they're not as juicy they're a bit drier so even when you come to doing lettering you can sense there's a difference in the color the absorption on the paper and also there's a slight dryness if you go too fast with them so there you you definitely need a little bit more control so for the moment just use them for um i would say for shading um because that's the best that's the best solution for me amazing um, the so. question about those yes. pens was um what color is the gray pen that you're using <laughs> okay fabulous so this one is so what you'll find is with um the abt pens let me see if i've actually got that light gray i'm not sure if i do do i no maybe i know i do so they come as a pair <laughs> so you can get the pros the same color as the abt water-based pens 
Um, so what you need to do is just sort of look for, I've put the wrong cap on, that's probably why it's messing things up. Um, you just need to look for the similarity in the color code and then you end up with the same color. So this one is N75. I forget what gray that is. There is a, a whole long list of different grays, but um, they tend to put their codes on here. So I've got the N75 and I've also got the N95. The N95 is just a little bit lighter. So you get more of a subtle uh, line behind your shadowing. Um, this one's just a tiny bit darker. So I kind of go between the two really. So yeah, hope that helps. Um, okay, so what do we will do is I'm going to continue. Now, we're just going to go on to, we'll put this design together, but I'm just going to go on to these little illustrations now that I've done and show you, obviously, we've used Monotip a couple of times, but I'll just show you how I use it. Um, so again, what I'll do is I'll take the colour that I have been using, which is this, the M75, and I'm going to now pull that into like the background. And again, this is actually quite a nice exercise to help you with just practicing like your control. Um, I tend to do very light, wispy um, Christmas trees. And this again is quite, sometimes you can play with the, the balance, the pressure of your pen. Um, and they're just fun to do so you could pull that into some of your warm-ups to be honest i i tend to um pick uh, strokes things that i like doing um, i don't want it to ever feel that i'm sat there having to do a particular technique if i don't particularly like it um, so mix it up you know obviously do the strokes that are important for putting your letters together but then have a play and do different things so you know you can bring out curls and swirls and you're getting to feel out how this tip works and trying to create that lovely balance on your the tip of your pen so you know by all means do play around with that you know creating different christmas tree shapes um and then just enjoying pulling in some different styles. So that's kind of, you know, generally I'll, I might just sit there, I might go on something like Pinterest and find some nice Christmas tree patterns that I like, and I'll just start to have a play with those um, as well. So what to do, we can go back to our main colors and I'm gonna start with my green. I'm gonna use my mono tip on the pen. And again, I'm doing the same sorts of techniques. So that's all you're doing really, is just having a play with that. You can by all means as well use that mono line. It's really nice to, again, if you're doing um, a word like so, Mary, you can take a contrasting color or a gray and you can create a really nice thin my line shadow around your lettering. So there's various ways. I really like these pens because there's a lot of versatility with them. So you're just sort of playing with where you want to place that line and changing up some of the effects. So, you know, by all means you can do this. And it's good to just sort of lightly place the line on parts of the letter. Once you start outlining every single bit of it, it starts to look a bit too heavy. So just kind of um, add little subtle details around your letter, but that's a really lovely way of pulling it in. So um, something like this, our tag, I'm gonna try one right here. I tend to put this on piece of paper like this um, because I'm going to go off the paper and again I'm just creating these little shapes for my Christmas tree 
and it doesn't matter if they're not perfect it's kind of quite fun just playing with the shape and then I'll do that with my bread so So I'm just creating, obviously, like little shapes and I'm putting in another colour, might do a different green or something. I've got quite a lot of these pens, by the way, slightly addicted. Um, so just overlapping and, you know, have fun, like don't worry about it being perfect because at the end of the day you are just having a bit of a play and experimenting on styles and designs and but it's just to kind of give you an idea of like what these pens what you can achieve with them and then creating your little bases for your trees doing something kind of fun like that and then what I tend to do is, again, with my um, grey, so these are the grey pens that I have. So the N19, the N75, I tend to just use my line, go back in and do my dots. So it'd be like my snowflakes. Again, you know, you can use whatever colours you want. There's no rule. I'm just showing you with this range of colour, colours that I've bought, but it's quite nice just to um, obviously do something that's a little bit more subtle in the background and then pull out your uh, designs and colours, uh, the bolder colours make them stand out a bit more. And then as I mentioned with the um, pen, the ABT Pro, the alcohol based one, so I'm using that M75 pen, this is the one that I then use to go over and do the little shadows on the Christmas tree so that I know I'm not getting, I'm not gonna be bleeding color into each other because again, it's just gonna look really messy. But the uh, water base, these water base pens, they are incredible for doing like a brush blending type style um, lettering technique and it's absolutely stunning. So you can get a lot out of these pens. You pull in water, you use them just like water-based paints. Um, you So it ha there's a lot of versatility with them and I, I really love them for that. So I'm, I know I talk about bleeding of the color, but in certain on certain occasions, I think you just want to be a little bit careful not to transfer too much um, colour from one pen into another when you want a little bit more of a cleaner design. So I'm just kind of going in and doing these little areas of shadowing. So that also just kind of brings it kind of brings it to life a little bit. It just adds a little bit of depth in your design. So that's really nice to be able to, to kind of do and to play with. And then again, on the Christmas card, I've done this really similar thing where, whereas I was showing you before with the gray pen, I've just pulled in that nice design on the back, really similar to what I've done on the tags and then popped my lettering over the top. So I can show you that. So we'll just do that example. So again, I'm just going to And if you're using, if you don't have the spare cards around, you know, by once, go and buy some, have a bit of a play with it. Um, but just do this on a plain piece of paper until you know that you're happy and you're ready to transfer that 
design over onto a card um, because it's it's also nice to just play with the ranges of colors that you might already have or ones that you're potentially hoping to buy um, just to kind of gauge what you like about them which ones you want to have stand out so just have uh, how many of these pens do you have <laughs> okay so i've got this really nice box if i tip it too much but you can see i've got quite a lot here and um i have even more <laughs> um i tend to and then some of my pros are kind of tucked in between these ones so i have only a few uh of that range like range the, the abt pros um that I like the colours of. I've got a couple of blues, but I've only bought a select few. Black is a really good one to have in the pro because again, um, sometimes when you're trying to do a, br a brush blending exercise, and I'll show you something that I did a while back. Um, this is what I'm talking about with the, um, the water-based pens. So you can create this where you get all these beautiful variations and it looks like I've done this with watercolour but in fact I've just used uh, the water base ABTs and you can also buy which again is something that um, I recommend this is a play this is just basically um, a pen that helps to blend colours in a little bit more smoothly so it has absolutely no colour in it it's a wet a wet pen but it helps to pull back colour through into the other when you're blending so that's a really good one um, it's it's called n 0 if anyone's interested and I've got three of those so I tend to use them when I'm doing brush blending I also have um, it's a it's sort of like um, a water base um, brush pen where you can open up the barrel this is Tombow again you pour uh, water into here and then you can almost like use it as a water like a water brush I would say but I tend not to do that so much because um sometimes you get a little bit too much leakage of water that comes out and it can go all over the place and actually um become a, you know saturate the paper up a bit too much so what I tend to do is I dip it into water like a brush pet um like a brush and then I use it to blend the colours together. So that's another effective way. And if you have a brush, it works exactly the same way. It's just that I happen to have that style. But those two pens are really good for brush blending and mixing up your water-based inks. So yeah, highly recommend. Okay, so I'm gonna just finish that off and do a couple more. Very random, sorry. I wanted to try and show everyone this stuff quite quickly. So I am speeding away. But like I said, if you have any questions, please just keep popping them in the chat. So I've got my little design. So that's the background. And then I'm gonna go back in and now place my lettering on top of this. So again, when you're doing something, obviously we've been doing this on a slightly bigger piece of paper. Um, you have to start thinking about, you know, placement and then size. So you're thinking about, you know, judging the space between things. So um, again, it's really good to experiment. If you've got a light box, if you've got a piece of tracing paper, pop that over the top, write out your words and see where you want to align them on your card or whatever your final piece is before you actually attempt it or as somebody said you can do your very faint pencil line and then go over that and then rub that out so that's not a problem whatever way works for you do it so um i'm just going to go back in i can kind of judge it by eye a little bit now i hope i can anyway she says <laughs> so i'm going to do my Mary and then place my Christmas on top of that. I might take a slightly darker red. Um,
There we go. I'm just going to pull that S up a bit because it didn't quite. You know, keep assessing your work as well as you do things. So, you know, what's nice about the brush pens is if you make a little bit of a wobble or a mistake, you can kind of go in and neaten it, neaten it up really. So don't worry too much about it being or not being perfect. So that's how I've done that. And then I'm going to go back in, as I said, with my alcohol base. So this is, again, I'm picking up the um, PN75, that's the ABT Pro. And I'm going to go in and start adding that nice shadowing on my letters. And sort of initially just kind of get an idea. What's really nice as well, when you use a, a slightly lighter gray, if you make any mistakes on your shadowing, it doesn't tend to show up as if you do something that's quite strong in color, like quite a bright, bold color. So I tend to use lighter just in case I put a line in where I don't particularly want it to be. It doesn't tend to become that obvious that I've made a mistake. So by all means, and sometimes that's why I do start with the lighter one. So it's even lighter, obviously this is the pen 95. And if you are sort of trying to gauge where you want to place your shadowing on your letter, it, it does it so lightly first that it gives you an idea. And then if you want to, you can just go back in and then darken it up once you're happy. So there's a lot of flexibility with these pens. It doesn't seem like as permanent, I would say, all the time. Don't be afraid to put something on and it not always work brilliantly. There are ways around it. Half the time I've done little things and nobody's even noticed it because of the choice of colours that I've used to create certain effects. So... Don't be worried. Just Question, uh, yeah. do you think using special writing paper with lines helps to start doing lettering or just plain paper? Absolutely. I think when you're first starting out um, with calligraphy, it's really good to have, um, it's really good to have those lines. Uh, you can create them obviously using rulers, whatever, having uh, like guided uh, lined, uh, sheets to use on. Um, I used a lot of that when I was starting out, but then it's also good to come away from it after a while and not feel that you have to stick religiously to using those lines. Because the reason why I have the style that I do is because I don't use those lines anymore. I've become, it allows me to be more expressive on, on the paper and it doesn't um, almost confine me to a space. It was incredibly important and I do highly recommend that you learn the right way and you learn the right techniques to start off with so that you don't develop bad habits. But I think equally in order to um, explore your own unique style, you then need to slightly pull away from certain things and just start going a little bit kind of wild on the paper and seeing where you're pen goes and seeing where your flow goes and giving yourself space to be creative. Um, I teach uh, modern flourishing and I don't necessarily use those lined um, guide, guide sheets uh, for, the, for the practice because I want people to just be really expressive and take their lines in all sorts of different places. Um, so that's sort of more of my approach. It's a little bit more free flowing. Um, but you get some really beautiful um, structures, lines, strokes, all sorts of really nice, happy accidents happen when you allow yourself a bit more space. So, yeah, I hope that helps. Amazing. So we have just under 10 minutes left. So any other questions anyone has, now's your chance to ask. Yes, ask away, ask away. <laughs> So I also, so I do, if anyone's interested, I do flourishing um, and that's both with dip pen and um, brush pen styles. I also teach 
um, the uh, watercolour brush bending, which is this. Um, so there are various things and I'm going to be trying next year um, to put on a couple more workshops where I um, give people access to that as well online and, and things that they can actually buy from me and little kits they can kind of do with videos explaining how the technique is developed, how it's done. So that's that's the, the hope for next year. But um, I do also have um, online and a couple of in-person workshops. So yeah, do get in touch if you are interested. But I hope this has helped because um, I think people do get scared <laughs> a little bit when you are a beginner and you first off get these because that's how my journey started with BVTs. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, like I said, they are very thick, chunky pens and I would not recommend just buying a whole pack as a beginner and starting out. Try the Fudinoskes. They have two different ranges as well. When you get the small pack, you can get and I've got them here that it's a little bit tricky to see but one is black and the other one is a uh, dark navy um I'm not quite sure why they put the colors so closely together but um one of them is a harder tip pen and the other softer so the black one in the food noske is a softer tip the navy blue is a harder tip now Again, it depends on what people like. And I will always say it's down to preference. Like by all means, keep on testing out. There's so many good pens on the market, but do test out the range of Tombow because they are really quite good. So sorry, I'm all the way up there. So as you can see, this one is, this one's a harder tip. This one, I'm hoping I haven't, it's a really old, yeah, slightly old. Let me let me find another one. I've got several of these pens, and it's a bit ridiculous how many I actually go through, but they are part of my favorite range of pens. That's why I do have so many. I might have to stick to that one. Um, this one, it's so difficult to see on camera, but they have a difference. And until you pick these two pens up, you'll you'll notice it. Um, it's very difficult. This one's slightly dried out. It's not a great example, but it's one of my, um, the, the softer one, which is the dark, the black is my favorite one out of the two. I find the, the navy blue one a little bit too hard for me, but I tend to use it if I'm doing very small detail, details and writing on things. And I want that really nice, thin, crisp line. I tend to use it for that because you can go incredibly thin with this pen, but I don't use it as much to write with. I tend to stick to the Fudinoske, which is the small tip, but soft tip. So I hope that helps. It's a little confusing, but if you've got any questions about it, just do let me know. Um, but again, as I said, they come as a pack. You can buy them together. This is really great um, to experiment with. Just test them out and see what you like. Um, and then obviously move on to the Tombow um, ABTs. But if you're comfortable with them, then just go wild, have fun, buy as many colors as you want. <laughs> nice. Um We've got a question just says, are we okay to send the design to family members for what they've done this evening? Oh my gosh, of course you can. Yeah, absolutely can. You can replicate it and, you know, do what, do what you like. That's totally fine. Not a problem. I designed it for this class. So, you know, it, it's for you to use. Also, it looks like the um, information on the, the pens is really useful because um, Liz was saying that she's been using the hard ones I didn't even realise. So that's oh. why she's not getting as thick a line. Right, of course, exactly. You have to go, you have to give it a bit more welly, but I find when you give it too much welly, your technique starts to go a bit squiffy and I don't like the pressure that I have to place on it, I guess it doesn't work as well. So yeah, I'm glad that's helpful. Amazing, I'm gonna switch back, oh, hello. <laughs> switch on my camera again, because um, we're pretty much at the end of session now so 
I'm going to replace spotlight. Hello everyone, it's me again. <laughs> I just want to say massive thank you to Illy for this evening. It was really good. Loved watching what you created. I have even, I have had a go <laughs> um, on my own little notebook here, following along. <laughs> oh good, I'm so glad. You see, that's what it's about, just have fun. Uh, yeah. Yay! Fabulous, go. <laughs> amazing. You've got the you've got the technique down, the thick to thins. I love it. <laughs> I just I only have one black uh, Tombow OBT, so I'm going to need more colours. <laughs> I mean, come on, like come join the club, you yeah. know. <laughs> it was good fun. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, again, just another yeah. little bit of housekeeping at the end, just to say um, thank you for watching. Obviously, this um, has been recorded. So you can go back and watch it on our YouTube channel in a couple of days once we've uploaded it. Um, Illy's been great. You can find her on Illy Boo Designs on Instagram or website. I know Anna's um, linked a website in the chat, so you can have a look. Um, if you have created anything this evening uh, and you would love to share it, um, we have a hashtag, which is hashtag Colt Pens Creative, all one word. Uh, if you hashtag that on Instagram we'll be able to find it we'll happily share it or send it to us we'd love to see we've got an email which is um creative at coltpens.com so um send us anything that and we can share it that'd be great um this is the end of our session and I will be closing the webinar shortly I'll turn my camera and our microphones will go off but um we'll hang around at the end just to catch up with any any last minute questions if you have any um, but yeah, that's pretty much it from us. Thank you so much again for this workshop. It's been lovely. And Thank yeah, um, well, I'm sure we'll do another one so hopefully soon. Yeah, no, it's been lovely. Thank you for every, to, well, to everyone who, who joined this evening. It's been, it's been really great. And yeah, um, do share, do share what you've done. It'd be wonderful. <laughs>